All right, Nick, let's talk about the Tennessee Volunteers. You know, there's a lot of been really big, exciting moves uh, this past offseason for the Volunteers. A lot of really great additions to this team. But this year isn't the only year that mattered because when you're building a football team, especially in the college world, you have to look forward and you have to build for the future. And Tennessee is doing exactly that with the move that they just made. Yeah, Myers, that's right. But before we look to the future, let's take a step back and look to the past real quick and go about, go down memory lane for the greatest Tennessee Volunteers of all time. And that's why I want to hear from you, Vols fans, in the comment section below. Give me your favorite Tennessee Volunteer that you ever watched play football in the comment section below. There's a lot of great names. Uh, Reggie White comes to mind, obviously Peyton Manning. You know, Jamal Lewis was actually my favorite. I know he's not as big as some of these other names, but I thought he was a really great player in his own right. Give me your favorite Tennessee Volunteer that you ever watched in the comment section below. Brian Myers, what you got? What's going on in Knoxville? Yeah, Nick, another great Ravens legend, great Tennessee volunteer, uh, Ravens coach, T. Martin. You yeah, know, there you go. You That's know, good. You know, quarterback of that, uh, you know, national championship team. BCS got to be a got to be a big one. But uh, all right, uh, a really good move that the Volunteers have just made, Nick, is getting the commitment of four-star wide receiver J.J. Harrell in the 2024 class. Uh, he's from North Panola High School. Uh, this is a big time uh, get because they are battling with all these other Southern teams. Smoky Mountain Corridor, obviously, you got to win that battle. But, you know, they steal him out of the grasp of the guys like Alabama, Arkansas, Auburn, Florida, LSU, Mississippi State, Ole Miss, Texas A&M. These are all guys that were going after Harrell. And I really just think this was a big steal for them because they're kind of getting depleted uh, in the top tier talent department of the wide receiver realm you see guys like Hyatt you see uh, guys like Tillman moving on to the pros uh, and but this is a transition period a little bit I think you got Milton coming in for quarterback he's there for a year uh, he most likely wins the quarterback battle there and they sit Nico but Nico could win you never know uh, things could shake out in a way that we are not expecting but you think Nico is going to be for sure the starter for the 2024 season and that's why adding a big time uh, wide receiver like Harrell in the 2024 class uh, is really exciting for me. I think he's going to do really good in Heupel's offense that really is great at pumping guys' stats up, uh, getting them touches, getting long, long touchdowns. So I, I thought this was really great. Uh, I thought it was a good addition. What do you think about Harrell and his uh, you know contribution to the Tennessee offense? Yeah, two things, My First thing, let's not forget, Colorado Buffaloes also offered this kid, right? Which means that you got the whole Coach Prime, Deion Sanders figure looming over it, right? And Harold still chose Mississippi, uh, still chose Tennessee, even though he's from Mississippi. So big win in that recruiting department because do not underestimate Deion Sanders' influence in, in the recruiting game. He's already made big moves when he was at Jackson State. He's doing the same thing at Colorado. So from that perspective, it's a big win from Tennessee as well. But here's the big thing, Mize, and this is one of the things I really love when programs, when they recruit and bring talent in, not just to build, not just to collect talent, not just to collect four or five star guys, but to build a strong roster and a strong team. Here's what I mean by uh, mean by that. Because right now, if you look at the Vols receiving core, their best player, in my opinion, is Squirrel Wright. Like this is a guy shifty, fast, incredibly fast, incredibly quick. Reminds me a lot of Tyree Kill, actually, uh, from the Kansas City Chiefs and Miami Dolphins in the NFL. But White is what? Uh, 5'10", 160 pounds. He's listed according to ESPN. So that's obviously a, a small, shifty receiver, completely different kind of dynamic than a guy like J.J. Harrell, who is 6'2", 185. As a young guy in high school, he'll probably feel out. He'll probably be closer to be like 6'3", 200, maybe a little taller, maybe a little thicker, depending on how it all shakes out in the end. And I love when teams recognize that the kind of player they have currently on the roster and they recruit complementary players. Because some programs, and I feel like they just get stuck in this rut. They just go like, oh, that's four-star, let's get him. This other four-star, let's get him. This other four-star, let's get him. And they end up with like, five four-star slot wide receivers and then they're really great on third and five and they can't do anything else right i feel like texas a&m has kind of become that the past few years they get a lot of big time recruits but they don't build a good team with those guys but here you have hypo and the volunteers doing the smart thing they're building a team like okay we got a lot of smaller shiftier you know explosive fast twitch wide receivers let's get a longer guy let's get a 50 50 ball guy let's get a guy who plays basketball and loves playing basketball in high school let's get that kind of player that kind of pair with that guy and whether it's nico or melton or whatever that situation is in the future it gives a complimentary asset for the quarterback, you know, fast, explosive, fast switch guy. And you've got your, you know, your, your winning one-on-one -on -one matchups, longer guy. And that's how you win games long-term in the SEC or frankly throughout college football is you build a team full of complimentary assets, very similar to how NFL teams build their rosters. You don't just collect talent. And that's why I think this was a great job by Hypel and the staff there in Knoxville.
Yeah, Nick. And, you know, I really like Carroll, and I like what you said. He's a big receiver. Uh, he even has the speed and the route running ability. You look at some of his high school highlights. He is getting a separation. He's got like five, seven yards on these guys when he's making these catches uh, in high school. So that looks really good as well. But you, you, I can't agree with you more. Uh, they really have to understand who they're getting, not just what they are. Four-star isn't as important as do we have a guy? We have a really great slot receiver. Can we get an outside receiver? Can we get a big body contested catch guy just like you said? You know, I really think that's extremely important for the volunteers going forward. And adding a guy like Harold, that is even more important when you have this kid who is so big. Uh, he's got the speed quickness. He can be a true number one outside uh, receiver type of guy as in addition to your slot receiver. So I really think this is a big move for Tennessee. And I'm excited to see how this 2024 class kind of fills out around the edges because you're going to see, are they going to continue this trend of adding guys that fit their need as well as getting a high recruit level guy?